thank you very much. So first, I thank the organizers of this meeting for, I'm glad that they gave me the chance to present my work in this nice occasion. And second, the title of the talk has been slightly modified with respect to the announced one. This cluster dynamics appears. Uh, this is, the original plan was to focus a lot on the correlations for the Boltzmann gas at low, for the, for the gas at uh, low density, but this uh, turned out to be rather technical, so uh, mm, I will dedicate to this topic only the first part of my talk, and the second part I will uh, present a complementary ongoing research with some curious results I found out very recently, and I thought it would be more fun for the audience. So I will start by explaining the meaning of this second line, which most of you already know very well, Boltzmann got the limit. So Boltzmann stands for the famous equation. Uh, this goes back to 19th century. It was written by Ludwig Boltzmann in his uh, giant effort to attempt a realistic description of rarefied gases. They are known as F, as a function of three-dimensional space, x, three-dimensional velocity, v, and time, t, with positive values. And the equation is dt plus v grad x f of x v t, free transport operator, equal to a collision operator q f x v t, which is nonlinear and is given by this integral, integral in a velocity v1, an impact vector running over the sphere of a kernel function containing the information on the uh, precise interaction, b, which is a function of omega and uh, the relative velocity v minus v1, and then the nonlinear term ff minus ff, the loss term is computed, uh, everything is computed in x, the loss term is computed in v, v1 simply, and the gain term is computed in the corresponding post collision of velocities when v and v1 collide with impact vector omega as given by these uh, scattering rules. So the simplest case is when uh, uh, the function b is exactly the scalar product between the omega and v minus v1, and this corresponds to uh, the elastic collision between uh, billiard balls. And I will be concerned with this, with exactly with this interaction for most of the next slides. So this is Boltzmann, and Grad stands for how Grad is the name of the scientist who explained that nearly 80, 80 years later in a clear mathematical way the limit in which the equation is expected to emerge. Uh, so underlying the equation we have a system of n Newtonian particles, let's take our spheres, um, colliding elastically and they live in a volume of order one and they have diameter epsilon, so average number of interactions per unit time will be uh, approximately epsilon square, which is the volume of the cylinder spanned in a unit time by one of these particles times the number of total particles, which is n. If we put this to be equal to 1, then the density in microscopic variables would be epsilon. And so the boltzmann grad limit epsilon that goes to 0 is a low density limit. And what is really important here, you should think that this limit as a law of large numbers. So the f x v t d x d v is the probability of finding a particle in position x and velocity v at time t, but alternatively it's also the fraction of particles uh, in a small cell in the phase space dx dv around xv at time t. So now I will introduce a notion which is uh, mm, 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 which emerged, comes out quite naturally from this picture of the gas and uh, gives information on the correlations. This is the notion of backward clusters, which are called backward clusters. It's defined as the group of particles involved directly or indirectly in the backwards in time dynamics of a given tight sphere. So suppose you pick up one sphere in the gas, say this one red, I don't know if you can see very well, this particle one, and uh, you, want, uh, information, you want some information on the trajectory uh, leading uh, to leading this, uh, this uh, leading the particle there, position x, velocity v at time t. So we look only in this particle and uh, forget all the others and follow its evolution backwards in time. At some point, uh, 
it will collide with some other particle, uh, say a time t1 smaller than t. Then you keep going backwards in time, at some point uh, one of these two particles eventually will collide with the third one, you keep flowing back and so on up till time zero. And uh, the set of particles that you find with this procedure at time zero is called the backward cluster of particle one uh, at time t. And this, uh, the cardinality of uh, this, oh, this backward cluster is something that you can be interested in, and these informations are the correlations. So see, in this picture, if you can see it, uh, the cardinality of the backward cluster in this particular example is equal to the number of direct or indirect collisions of the particle one going backwards in time. This is not always the case because there can be collisions among the particles belonging to a same backward cluster. So the meaning of this approximate here is that we expect that in the low density regime these recollisions between particles belonging to the same cluster uh, are negligible, have negligible probability. Um, the backward cluster becomes, you, may, you, you assign an initial measure on your system, you have a dynamical system, the backward cluster becomes a stochastic variable. Uh, you can study, for instance, the distribution of the size of the cluster. So let's do it, let's introduce a bit of terminology. Mn is the phase space of n spheres, so zeta1, zeta n is the configuration in phase space, position xi, velocity v, vi, so the particles will have distance larger than epsilon because the two, sp two spheres cannot overlap. Then you assign a positive symmetric density function over the phase space, Wn0, and this will evolve according to the Liouville equation, just transporting along the trajectories of the R sphere flow. And this will define your Wn at time t. Uh, then what we are interested in is the distribution of one tag particle, so we compute the marginal, one particle marginal of the density at time t, integrating out all the degrees of freedom except the first one. And there will be a representation of this object as an expansion in size of the backward cluster, sum over n of f n n small n time t, where the single term f n small n at time t is the contribution due to the events, the backward cluster of one as cardinality n. This expansion you can write in principle, you can right in terms of the initial density of this um, of, of your measure WN0 but formulas you will find will be very very complicated and it is difficult to get something from there um, I will come back to this point of course also at the kinetic layer so, so for the solution of the Boltzmann equation you can write such an expansion and at least in some cases uh, you can uh, really work with the formulas and uh, derive predictions of the distribution of backward clusters. Uh, so, mm, instead of looking at one single tag particle, you can look also at couples or triples or a set of J particles, and this is also very important. So, in principle, you can write, okay, you look at the, the J particle marginal of uh, your measure, F and J at time T, and there will be also an expansion in uh, Becker's clusters of size uh, small n, this, um, well, uh, this uh, I mean, uh, the backward cluster in this case is uh, defined exactly as before, and keeping your j, you look at your j particles, you go backwards in time, and you collect all the particles that appear. And why I say this is important? Because here, because here comes out the uh, most important difference between the particle system described in the previous slides and the stochastic process associated to the Boltzmann equation. Uh, because, see, when you look at the tag uh, couple 1, 2, you may find uh, this situation here, but you may find also this situation here. So the, the backward cluster of the couple 1, 2 is the same in both cases, but in the first case, the backward cluster of the particle 1 and particle 2 respectively are disjoint and in the second case, they are not because of this uh, recollision here. 
this, this kind of events, this, uh, which I call recollision, creating correlating correlations between different clusters, is what, what prevents the state to be factorized. So the cause for which the, 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 two point, the two points marginal is not the tensor product of the one point marginal. This is called also breakdown of propagation of cars. Propagation of cars is the conservation in time of the factorization of the state. And so as soon as epsilon is strictly larger than zero, the, uh, the violation is the, the propagation of cars is that the, in general the j-point marginal will be different from the tensor product of one point marginal. This is also the core of the problem which is known as validity, mathematical validity of the Boltzmann equation, uh, stated more or less in this way, if at time zero the J particle marginal is approximately factorized and becomes exactly factorized in the limit, in the Boltzmann grad limit, then uh, we would like to show that this uh, is also true at positive time. So the FNJT converges to a tensor product of functions where f, the single term of the product, is a solution of the Boltzmann equation with that of zero. And there has been a lot of people working on this subject. Grad 49 is the formulation of the problem, and 75 is uh, the first and still most important result, which is the proof for short times and for a hard sphere system. And then there is a long list of contributions in providing a mathematical, completely rigorous version of the proof of Lamford. Uh, and then there are the recent contributions. Uh, there is my contribution on the rigorous validity of, of the art sphere hierarchy, and then Gallagher, and Ramon, and Texier, and Pulvient, Safir, and myself, which put together give a fairly complete description of, a fairly complete picture of the validity for short times for general short range interactions. So, now, let me give a very naive uh, insight on the propagation of cars. So the, what, what will follow is just rough, rough uh, combinatorics. Uh, call k back at t the average of the cardinality of the backward cluster of one particle at time t. So uh, one would say the probability that two particles are dynamically correlated will be uh, order k back at t square over n. Because you, you have to choose one particle, you, this you can do in n ways. And then uh, this particle must belong to the first, to the to the backward cluster of particle one, and at the same time to the backward cluster of particle two. The fraction of these clusters is k back at t over n, so I have k back at t over n squared times n. And so if the average size of the backward cluster remains finite in your regime, then would expect that the probability of correlations between any pair in a group of j particles should be of order j squared over n. I just multiply by the number of couples. And this means that correlations should disappear as for, for values of j such that j squared over n goes to zero. So the propagation of chaos, at least by this rough counting, uh, should, uh, should hold for marginals that uh, that uh, grow uh, as which size grows as as, as square root, small uh, no, uh, lower than the square root of n, and uh, we are very very far from 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 proving such a such a, such a statement. But uh, uh, first of all, because we have results only for for short times, uh, but I want to remark that Lamford proved the propagation of chaos for. Uh, um, uh, groups of particles and marginals growing past as a log of n. And this can be actually improved. Uh, the same result holds where j grows as a power of n, where this alpha here is, uh, depends on the detail of the model and this a fraction of 1. But uh, to prove this, uh, one has to look at different quantities, not looking as marginals as is usually done in, 
in the perturbative approach to the, to the, to the mathematical validity of the Boltzmann equation, but to quantities that are related to the uh, fluctuations, I or the moment of the fluctuations around the Boltzmann equation. So call n delta the fraction of particles in a set delta in the one particle phase space. Um, then by, by, by the theorem of, of Lanfer, you know that this stochastic variable converges to its average in the, in the Boltzmann grand limit, at least for short times. Then subtract the average uh, and uh, compute these differences for uh, different regions of the phase space, take the product and average again. This will be I'll have the form of, a, of an integral over these uh, cells of a function ej, which uh, I call a correlation error of order j. Um, this is uh, connected to the marginal by a formula of uh, truncation, so with, I mean, uh, um, comes from statistical mechanics, knows very well that these uh, objects here are. In, in this case, not, uh, fu not uh, fully truncated, but partially truncated for relation, correlation functions. And uh, when, when one deals with truncating functions, um, Rico was mentioning something similar before, it is more convenient to take a grand canonical setting because the, the canonical constraint becomes very, very annoying. So this is an advice for the, just for the next slide. Uh, uh, when I will present the result uh, which we have concerning these uh, co correlation errors. The result is essentially that these, uh, these objects here we can control when j is uh, very lar much larger than logarithm and uh, growing as a power of n. Then this is a joint work with Mario. Uh, so assume first that there, is, uh, there exist constants uh, uh, beta, zeta, alpha, zero, gamma, zero positive such that the initial state has rescaled correlation functions f, epsilon, k. So now I'm looking at the grand canonical, so the, so the, 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 the k point marginal is replaced by the rescaled correlation function. And uh, um, assume that they satisfy L infinity bounds of this form, so the k function grows. Uh, uh, at most as a constant to decay and uh, moreover there is uh, an exponential decay for large velocities and this has to be true for all cases. And uh, furthermore, assume that at time zero your correlation errors flow to zero as epsilon to the gamma zero k and again you have uh, exponential decay for large velocities. And this, uh, this we can assume. This we can assume for k growing as a negative power of epsilon, epsilon to the minus alpha zero. This will be true for most of reasonable states you can compute, for instance, Poinsonian distribution of art spheres, uh, excluding uh, overlaps. Then uh, the structure uh, is preserved in time, although in a weaker norm. So there exist two positive constants, alpha gamma at time t bar, which is uh, uh, the same time as in Lanford theorem and epsilon zero uh, positive such that uh, for any time smaller than t bar and epsilon smaller than epsilon zero. Uh, the ek integrated over velocity with position fixed almost everywhere in the phase space uh, flows to zero as epsilon to the gamma k and this is true uh, for k still going as epsilon to the minus alpha. Okay, and uh, I will not say anything about the proof except for the fact that we don't look at the usual perturbative series, the dual ML series for the R sphere BBGKY hierarchy, but we rather operate a cluster expansion on that in order to reconstruct these guys, EKT, and at the same time show that the number of terms defining the EK, EK is not too large. So naive, power, naive, naive counting gives, gives, gives a number of terms going as 2 to the k square, and you have to show that uh, the affecting number goes something like k factorial, and for that you, you operate a cluster expansion. And uh, uh, in the second part, we face the uh, estimates of many recollision events. So recollisions, I remind, are the events uh, creating correlation between different clusters in the theorem of Lanford and subsequent literature. What you have to do is estimate a single recollision 
in, uh, in the time interval 0 t. Here, what we have to do is estimating, uh, is, is estimating events in which k particle, you have k particles, each of, each of which uh, undergoes uh, one external, one recollision. So, okay, and this uh, the, uh, propagation of counts is, 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 is a simple corollary of that, and uh, also we have the uh, indirect suggestion that the average size of backward cluster remains finite for what I said from the previous slide, at least uh, for times smaller than this t bar appear in the theorem. So, natural question now is what about the statistics of K? Do we have a direct way to control the statistics of the size of backward cluster, and can we say something for these statistics at least for t larger than, than, than t bar? And the, this doesn't come from the proof of this theorem because let me mention that, that, that uh, the, the, in the proof of this theorem or in Lanford's proof, the probability of having uh, a trajectory with backward cluster of size n uh, never shows up really because uh, you work with this dual ML series, this dual ML series, the single term in the dual ML series has no, no positive sign. Uh, this goes back to the fact that the collision operator has positive part and negative part and uh, and uh, when you construct this series, you have product of these positive and negative parts, so you don't have a precise probabilistic interpretation of the single term. So to get a, a real expansion in positive terms in which each single term gives the probability of, the backwards traject of a real backward trajectory, you should do a kind of resummation absorbing all the negative terms. And this you can do, but the price to pay is usually high since the formulas become very much much less tractable. Nevertheless, I mean, there is still within our framework a situation where this can be done. Of course, uh, um, we can ask the same question at the level, just as the level of the, of, the, of the kinetic equation, just at the level of the Boltzmann equation. Can we say something on the statistics? This, uh, can, uh, this, in, in that case, if we look at the Boltzmann equation, and uh, furthermore, we consider uh, spatially homogeneous cases, then the situation becomes much more clear. Um, so f now is assumed to be independent of x, and just f of v and t, and this is uh, the Boltzmann equation in this case here. So it's a positive collision operator minus a term, which I write in this multiplicative form. This uh, function r of v, of, of v and t is given by this integral velocity impact vector of the kernel of the Boltzmann equation times the, f, the solution of the Boltzmann equation itself at time t. So this r depends on the solution itself. And in the special case of r spheres, uh, can be the integral uh, of uh, the impact vector can the uh, computer gives you a pi and this reduces to this uh, non-central absolute first moment at time t. So, um, if, you, if you call F0 the initial datum, and uh, you look at this equation, forget, of this, uh, forget for one moment of this uh, uh, collision operator, you treat the equation as a homogeneous equation, you integrate and you find this term which is the free flow contribution the first phase contribution of the expansion in size of backward clusters. So e to the minus the integral of this function r from 0 to t multiplied the initial datum. So this exponential here is the uh, conditional probability density of having a particle flowing freely with velocity v from time 0 from, to time t. And uh, uh, then uh, you, uh, uh, you treat this as a homogeneous equation and you keep iterating, you compute the dual ML series and what emerges is uh, uh, an expansion of this form where the single term Fn V and T is the N collision contribution to, to the solution. So uh, this you can write explicitly, this is written here. Yes, you have a sum of uh, graphs which are binary three graphs k1, kn, with n nodes. Uh, this uh, uh, tells you how the particles in the backward cluster 
appear who is the father of, of who. And the, for each one of these graphs, you have uh, an integral. Is a ten, there is a time of the product. And then there is a composition of operators, SQ plus, SQ plus, SQ plus, SQ plus, applied to the tensor product of the initial state, where uh, the uh, uh, operator J is just... Uh, the operator SJ is just the mm, multiplicative operator uh, of the exponential of this function R. And uh, Q plus is the gain collision operator acting on particle K. Actually, this uh, uh, expansion was already known in the case of uh, Maxwellian molecules, which I will introduce in the next slide. And this was known as Wild Soons and was studied in 2000. In quite a detail by Carlo and Carvalho and Gabetta. So ma maximum molecules are an extremely simplified model uh, which still uh, gives you interesting information on what's going on. In fact, was used already at the times of Maxwell and Boltzmann themselves. So let's look at the statistic of Becker clusters first for such a model. So Maxwellian molecules means that uh, your kernel here is assumed to be a function just of uh, the cosine of the angle between uh, the relative velocity and the impact vector. It is a positive function, and we further assume here that this positive function has finite integral in d omega. This is called uh, in literal uh, angular cutoff assumption or grad assumption. In this case, the function r becomes simply a constant, the integral over omega of this function g. And then you can make the computations exactly. You can compute the integral of fn. This gives you exactly the probability of uh, backward cluster of size n, and this comes out to be e to the minus rt, 1 minus e to the minus rt to the n. And then you compute the average. The average is equal to e to the rt minus 1. So a very simple statistics. This I mean, you says that the, 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 the backward cluster of size n uh, as a distribution which is close to 0 as a constant to the n for n large. And then for our spheres, what can we do? Uh, for our spheres, we don't have explicit computations. We don't have even estimates on the Fn for times larger than the time of Lamford. But uh, um, we can look at the first moments of the distribution and uh, uh, compute partial differential equations and derive some upper and lower ground well estimates uh, which control the average size using the estimates known from the theory of the homogeneous Boltzmann equation. Um, so, uh, assume to have all the moments up to the third one uh, finite uh, for your uh, initial, uh, initial data, and, then, and assume to have finite entropy, then you can prove that there exist positive constants uh, such that uh, you have uh, upper and lower bounds will show this exponential behavior. And after that, you to, you can test your result for our uh, art spheres uh, via molecular dynamic simulations. And this was done with Aoki and uh, Tetsuro Tsuji, Japanese group. And uh, uh, you can test the exponential behavior here, uh, the figure for three different initial states, up to times much larger than, uh, than the time t bar appearing in, uh, in the theorem of the previous slides. Okay, so this doesn't tell you so much, but um, um, uh, observe that uh, in, uh, already from this uh, very partial results, it emerges quite clearly that the statistics here is very simple. So the, the distribution of cluster of size n is constant to the n, and the average size both for Maxwellian and, and Hart spheres goes as an exponential. And the, which is something which you could uh, expect a priori, it's easily expected a priori. But so in particular, no complicated phenomena such as blow up or phase transition uh, emerge here. I want to come to the second part of my, of my talk. And... Uh, uh, introduce a different notion of cluster which is uh, present in literature. Uh, in, um, we 
which is uh, at first time could be could look, could look similar, but it is in actually very very different. And for this notion of cluster, we have instead a rich statistics. This is. Uh, uh, the notion of dynamical cluster, which appears already in the book by Bogolyubov in 1946. This is why I chose this name, Bogolyubov cluster. And uh, so consider, uh, let us go back again to the dynamical system of an R sphere of mass one, or disks in two dimensions. So properties in cluster dynamics is the following property, very simple. For any given time, the whole set of particles is decomposed in finite clusters which move independently during a random interval of time. So we call two spheres neighbors at time t if they collide during the time interval 0 t. And then any connected component of this neighbor relation is called a dynamical cluster at time t. So at time 0, you have... Uh, n clusters of size 1. Then uh, at, time, at positive time, uh, couples are created, and then triples are created, and the number of singletons uh, decreases. And this, this, okay, this was appealed in the book by Borouliouf, and then was studied the uh, solid determinant dynamical limit by C9 in the 70s, first for the one dimensional uh, system, and then for more general systems. Now, I want to uh, say something, I mean, study uh, properties of these dynamical clusters at the low density region. We want to study uh, the statistical properties uh, of, of, of these objects. So, for instance, uh, the number of clusters of size k at time t, uh, or the assume, which is the total number of clusters at time t, then you introduce distribution, uh, which is simply the average fraction of clusters of type k at time t, or the average fraction of particles in a k cluster at time t, and so on. So, still, uh, there is little hope, little hope to have analytical results for this object because still you can write uh, these, these distributions in terms of, of, of your initial density, but it will be extremely complicated. <laughs> Numerically, instead, they have been studying this paper in 2008 by Gabriel of Kelsborg, Sinai, and Zaliaplin, and uh, they, they found out this uh, scenario, which is scenario typical of phase transition of second kind. Mm. So, yes. So, backward cluster, you pick one particle in tight T and you go backwards in time. And you collect all the particles that appear in the procedure. So, in, this is uh, uh, this notion not time reversal. Okay. Uh, Bogolubov cluster is instead uh, completely symmetric. You I mean, you, you start okay. You start at time zero and uh, uh, you go at time t, but um, at time zero you have uh, uh, each each single particle is a cluster, so you have n clusters of size one. Then uh, when uh, you, you make it evolve, when two particles collide, they form a couple. When uh, there is uh, another particle that collides with one of these two, they form a triple. And you do this for the full system. Okay, so the, the, the dynamics uh, implies uh, a decomposition of your system in clusters. And then you can study the distribution of these clusters, for instance, which is the fraction of couples. Of <coughs> Yes, sure. Um, um, so, uh, since you, uh, uh, let's see. Okay. Wait a second. Okay, you have your system of spheres. Uh, this is a schematic, I mean, symbolic representation. And then, okay, uh, these are n spheres. So this is time zero. At time zero, 
you have n clusters. Each of these spheres is one cluster, okay? n clusters of size one. Then you make them evolve. For instance, these collide. This form a couple. These do not collide. And this collide. This form a couple. Okay? And here you have two couples and you have three singletons. Then you make a steel evolve and, uh, for instance, this collides with this and this forms a triple. And this collides with this and this collides with this. This form a cluster of four. Okay? And uh, this is a core difference uh, from the situation when you look, for instance, of one of these particles at time t, this one, this one, and then you go backwards in time because um, if you find this situation here, for instance, this is a, cluster, a backward cluster of this particle here of, time, of size 2, but this, could, this particle here could have collided with the third one and this would be... So, <coughs> the numerical experiment for hard disks, this is the cluster size distribution, uh, the, the fraction of clusters uh, of, of, of size M, they call M the size of the cluster, at three different instants, green, blue, and red. So uh, there is a, a critical time. Uh, uh, for, for, for times smaller than this critical time, this uh, red distribution, this, uh, sorry, this green, green distribution, uh, you have uh, exponential decay in the distribution of clusters. Then uh, at the critical time, there is a sharp uh, change in the, in, the qualitative, uh, in the qualitative behavior because the distribution uh, is not anymore exponential, but it becomes a pure power law. And the power law exactly that goes as M, sorry, this M you should identify with K here. This goes as M uh, to the minus 5 over 2. And this uh, 5 over 2 seems to be a universal constant. This has been found in all the models, I mean, independently of the density and the number of particles. Then, uh, for times larger than this critical time, you have, again, exponential decay of the distribution, but a, a gap is created uh, between uh, the maximal cluster, you see this point, this red point here, and the, re the rest of the clusters. So the, 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 the maximal, there is a sort of delta in the maximal clusters. The maximal cluster uh, starts uh, growing and growing and eating all the others, and it, I mean, it's, uh, it's, its density flows exponentially to the full density of the, of the system. It's like a percolation, it's like a, a percolation uh, situation, but analytically much more difficult of percolation because it involves uh, uh, trajectories of the earth sphere flow. And uh, uh, so the, 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 the general behavior which has been found for all the models studied uh, by this group is this one here, uh, k to the, the distribution of, of the size k is k to the minus beta, beta is equal to the 5 over 2, e to the minus k over a function gamma. And this function gamma is uh, monotone increasing for times smaller than the critical time, decreasing for times larger than the critical time, and it diverges at the critical time. So at the critical time, and only at the critical time, you have the pure power law. And uh, it is... Uh, it's quite surprising the fact that uh, the, 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 um, the critical time at which uh, this phase transition occurs uh, is uh, when the size of the backward cluster or the maximal cluster is uh, of the approximately 7% of the full system, so quite small. This is also quite independent of the, of the model study. So now the question is uh, can we see such a phase transition in the boltzmann grad limit and if yes, can we derive it rigorously? And the conjecture is yes, and this is a conjecture because I have no proof for our spheres, but there is a strong motivation for this conjecture, which is made of two parts. So the first part is the claim that uh, we have uh, formulas for computing uh, which uh, uh, formulas com for computing the distribution of the Bogolub of clusters from the Boltzmann equation and these formulas are like this and look quite reasonable 
Uh, so in the Boltzmann grad limit, let me state this a bit more precisely, in the Boltzmann grad limit, the average fraction of particles converges to function GTK and the mass density of clusters converges to function F. TK, which are computable from the solution to the Boltzmann equation, and here is the formula. Uh, there is a normalization constant, then there is a sum of uh, three graphs, which are not necessarily binary three graphs, but uh, just three graphs in the usual sense, like this. Label three graphs with k vertices, and then uh, for each of these graphs, we have an integral. Uh, here, the times are not anymore. Uh, ordered, t1, t2, tk, integral of times not ordered, velocities, impact vectors, and the product of uh, cross-section factors and uh, the exponentials, which one corresponding to uh, each particle, and then the times product of the initial state. So here appears the, in, in, in this formula, I don't enter in details, but appears the uh, trajectory of the, the velocities uh, of, of particle i during the, the evolution of the dynamical cluster. And this, uh, okay, if you ask what is the, the physical, uh, what is the physical relation between backward clusters and W of clusters, but not so much, not that much, not that much, but still uh, in terms of formulas, since I am a mathematical physicist, I wrote in a tidy uh, way the formula for the backward cluster, and from that formula it is, it is easy to argue which is the uh, right form uh, described in the Bogolub of cluster. And this claim can be actually rigorously proved for small enough times. It is a kind of proof of Lamford theorem, but um, more difficult, and this uh, is a content of a preprint, which will appear in the next days in the archive. <coughs> and second motivation, which was a little bit fun for me at the beginning, is that if you look at these formulas for the... Uh, model of Maxwellian molecules, then you find exactly the same statistic with the same critical indices uh, that have been found for the hard disks system uh, in the numerical experiments by Sinai and collaborators. So consider the Boltzmann equation for maximum molecules with grad cutoff, which is this one here. Then uh, you can compute the associated cluster size distribution, and this is uh, GTK, K to the minus beta is this form, E to the minus K over gamma T, plus an error, and this beta is exactly 5 over 2. This gamma is a function diverging at the critical time, and uh, you have a phase transition of the second kind, in the sense that the normalization constant appearing in the distribution as, uh, is smooth, is decreasing as you expect, but this is this continuous second derivative at the critical time, which is in this particular model is simply uh, the inverse of R, of the function R in here. And uh, the maximal cluster does not show up uh, because the maximal cluster in the Boltzmann grad limit we're considering a size infinite. It's flown to infinite. So you don't see it from here, from the, from the fraction of, of, of clusters, you cannot see it, but if you look at the mass of particles falling in a certain cluster, you can see indirectly from the fact that the normalization breaks down. <coughs> so this quantity here, the sum over k of the FTK, where FTK is um, the density of particles in a k cluster at time t, this, the corresponding, uh, the corresponding object uh, at, the, at the level of particles with, uh, when epsilon is strictly positive are normalized by definition, but in the Boltzmann limit they are not. It is strictly smaller than one, and actually it is uh, nearly zero for, uh, it is, uh, sorry, it is uh, nearly one for times smaller than the critical time, and then it decreases and it, it goes exponentially to zero as the time is larger than the critical time and goes to infinity. Um, so this, this part of the mass which is lacking here is going to the giant cluster, a cluster which has infinite size. So the density is not really defined in the giant cluster as 1 minus this constant here. And if you compute this for the Maxwellian molecules at the critical time, you find the 7%, the 7 of the 
total mass of the system. And the proof of this is by explicit computation. You can, for material molecules, reduce the formula of the previous slide to this one, then you find this, this thing here, and you apply a stealing approximation. And this, this k to the k minus 2 is uh, the number of graphs, and uh, there is an additional uh, in square root of k coming from the stealing approximation, which gives you the k to the 5 over 2, and this is likely to be exactly the same composition for our spheres, but for our spheres I have not yet uh, uh, proof that uh, we can control the constant P, the corresponding uh, constant P, constant to the k up in here. But, so, to conclude, in, and connect the two things we're looking at, is, um, the situation is, is the following, with the, uh, finite probability the backward class at any time with finite probability the backward cluster of one particle is uh, is, uh, is uh, with, uh, sorry with probability one the, prob the, the, the backward cluster of, of one particle will be will be finite but uh, uh, at the same time for times larger than the critical time with very high probability uh, this backward cluster will be connected through infinitely many other uh, particles, I don't see if they can, if you can see that they, it's almost transparent, but uh, you will have uh, infinitely many collisions that connect with infinitely many particles, this backward cluster to the, to the rest of the particles of the system. And uh, as I conclude with uh, some plots of the functions you can derive from the Maxwellian molecules model is, is the density of giant clusters, so approximately zero for times uh, smaller than the critical time here is this one here, and then it flows exponentially to one as, uh, as, as t is larger than, uh, than the critical time. And uh, um, I think it's the time to stop, so I will stop here and let me conclude with a personal dedication to my friend uh, Emanuela Schiavo who passed away just two days ago at the age of 30. She was graduated in this department uh, in 2009 and she was just uh, such a beautiful person. Thank you very much. There is no clear, there's no clear connection between you mean between the lamp for time and the time and the critical time of this phase transition. There is a weak a weak connection in the sense. I mean, when you uh, try to to estimate the perturbative series and you get the short time result, the, this is because you have um, some some over n of some constant which depends on time to the end, this is a geometric series, so you cannot control this constant. So this, this, this sum over n is the sum over the number of particles which are correlated to the one you are looking at. So, and, so this, this difficulty, technical difficulty in controlling this constant would be related to uh, the, the proximity to this phase transition. But probably, uh, mm, the, 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 sorry? The sum appearing here is related to the size of the network cluster. Yeah, to the size of the network cluster. Not to the Bogolino cluster, but still, at, at, at least at the level of Boltzmann, you can write uh, the backward clusters in sums of. Uh, <laughs> of Bogolubov clusters, and not, not sum of all the Bogolubov A single backward cluster you can write as a sum of a special Bogolubov cluster, so there is a connection between formulas. This is the kinetic level. When you put recollisions, you put particles, it becomes much less clear. At least at the kinetic level, there is a relation. Uh, so if you try to um, control what one you, you you want to derive a global in time perturbative control at the kinetic level for the solution of the Boltzmann equation, 
uh, it could be that uh, this representation in Boko Lugov clusters uh, <coughs> helps you, but this is subject of a current investigation. This is something I want to try to do. But I mean, one has to observe that uh, even though the last part uh, time is finite, you can have uh, uh, people in the group Uh, uh, does Well, the physical meaning is uh, that shown up by, by this picture. Mm, uh, this um, uh, probably is not is not really related to correlations. I mean, uh, at least uh, if you look really at the system of particles, the kinetic level could be. But uh, I mean, if you look at the physical system, it's more like um, probably is more like uh, geometric information. It's not really related to the correlation. The correlation is given by the backward cluster. analysis was based on the fact that uh, uh, to estimate a time zero with respect to the Higgs measure, what's uh, the probability uh, that particles are uh, well separated? So, so you want mm. to I and mean, if you want to look at up to time t, you want to put up the probability that uh, uh, the that whole particles are gathered in, into finite clusters separated by I don't see anything of this so connected to my analysis at the moment. But, but uh, I, my analysis is, uh, is, is kinetic up to now. So, yeah, but still, still, uh, still, but I don't see anything. Also, so. another thing I mentioned there, there are papers by Kenny at this school in Berlin uh, that they are mm. uh, trying to mm. they define clusters. I mean, it's in equilibrium, so it's not dynamic. They define clusters if particles are in within interaction range. And they want to prove a phase transition in the sense that, we, that you see a giant cluster in the limit when the temperature goes to zero and the density goes mm. to zero, especially. So, so I mean, this might be some other. Okay. Thanks. Last, very last question. Please, a brief question. Could you please comment for me on the molecular dynamics in relation to the Oh, well, actually, in this, <coughs> you refer to this picture here, right? Uh, oh, this. Okay, actually, I, I, I don't have an answer to this because this was part of the oh. Japanese group, Aoki and Suji, so I have no precise information of the software and so on, but. It, yeah, it was just standard molecular dynamic simulation. Mm. Okay, so you 